One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's the Gear Bear here, like always. And today I'm coming from the back of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. And today I'm going to show you how to take your taillights from kind of boring and outdated to a little bit more modern with the install of LED brake and turn signals, which in this car, the brakes and turn signals are the same bulb. So with this little modification, we're actually gonna be keeping the existing housings and all we're doing is changing out the bulb. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys today in this video is how to just very easily change out the light bulbs uh, to LED ones that I picked up at AutoZone or any uh, auto parts store. And then I'm gonna also show you guys how to really easily install some uh, resistors to help prevent any hyper flash issues that you can uh, get. Um, you get them in this vehicle and in many other vehicles, you will also have that issue. So I will show you guys how to resolve that. I'll go ahead and show you guys all the products that I bought to go ahead and do this little modification and um, just kind of go through the process. It's all very simple and there's other videos showing how to do this type of thing. But um, if you've got a Jeep Grand Cherokee, I'm gonna show you how to do it exactly for this car. Um, and I think, you know, if you own this car, um, you know, this it'll make any car look a little bit more updated because LED is kind of the way of the future now. And um, also it's a little bit safer because you can see, uh, you know, these are instant on off and they really grab people's attention. Uh, these are a little bit um, less bright and when you brake, it's not as instant as much as this is. Um, so if you're braking and you really want someone to actually see you're braking quickly and help prevent an accident a little bit better, um, this is the way to go. And when you buy a car that costs as much as this does, especially when they've got Durangos and stuff with all LED tail lights, and yet the Jeep Grand Cherokee does not, um, this is something I think that should have been done from the factory, but since it isn't, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do it yourself. Alrighty, so what did I buy and what are you going to need to do this yourself? Uh, let's go ahead and do our little parts list. So first thing, you're going to need the bulb, right? So I went ahead and picked up the Sylvania Zevo bulb. Um, it's an LED-based bulb. And um, for the Jeep Grand Cherokee, you're going to need bulb 3157. And since these are uh, red lights, I went with the R, which is a red light. Um, these have good reviews online. Um, some people, depending on a different car, if you have a different car, um, don't need a resistor with these, I've read. Um, but there's nothing built in on this and these don't pull a whole lot of current. So you, you're probably going to need one for any other car. But some people say you don't, I don't know, whatever. But uh, for the Jeep Grand Cherokee, you are. So you've got your bulb. You're going to need a resistor. So I went ahead and same make as the Sylvania Zevo bulb. I got the Sylvania LED load equalizer or load uh, resistor. It's the same thing. Um, pretty much a metal thing that you wire um, in line with your bulb that is causing hyper flash. And it pretty much pulls electricity in the form of heat. Uh, this thing will get hot um, when you mount it back in your, uh, your light housing. But anyhow, it pulls current and um, pretty much pulling an electrical load on the circuit. Um, making the car think that your LED bulb, which isn't pulling a lot of current, um, is actually pulling as much as a normal bulb. So it's kind of tricking the system by pulling an extra amount of electricity. Uh, so that way your car doesn't think that your bulb is burnt out. So you're going to need this to prevent the hyper flash uh, issue and uh, any warnings in your instrument cluster. And that kit also comes with these little uh, wire taps. Uh, so that way you don't actually have to cut your wiring harness. You can just kind of uh, clip them in line and uh, it's kind of a quick easy install. Some people don't like these because if they're made cheaply um, they can just kind of like pop out over time and then uh, disrupt the circuit and then you would get your hyper flash issue again but uh, these seem okay to me. If I have an issue down the road I can go ahead and just pull them out and uh, just cut the lines and actually um, go ahead and wire them in more a little bit more permanently but these should be fine. You're also going to need a flathead screwdriver to go ahead and pop out the plastic little retaining clips that hold the light housings in. Um, so that's really easy. These are very easy, these light housings to take off. Um, all you need is a little flathead screwdriver. And then the last thing that I need is a blade or something that I can cut the little, the protective insulation around the, uh, the, the wiring harness um, for the tail lights. And this is just because in order to wire in our load resistor or load equalizer, I'm going to need access to those wires and uh, the insulation, the little protective wrap around that is going to get in the way. So I'm going to very gently cut some of that off 
so that way I can access the wires. Let's go ahead and start this little DIY install. Oh, and one more thing. You guys might be thinking, instead of having to deal with the load resistor equalizer, can I just change out to an LED compatible flasher unit? which is what I did. I did a similar setup to this in my uh, 1999 Toyota 4Runner I had back in college. I already looked this up for you, so I'm gonna save you some time. So this car, and I guess a lot of modern cars, they don't even have an actual flasher unit. The body control module, BCM, pretty much the computer that runs the car, um, it actually takes care of the flashing um, process for this vehicle. Uh, so there is actually not a, a physical flasher unit that you can just replace and pop in an LED compatible one. Um, so I already looked that up for you guys. So really, you either need, I mean, you're going to need a resistor. You're either going to wire in your own resistor or you would buy a completely new um, light housing that already has built-in LEDs and then they wire in resistors built into that. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to go the resistor route regardless. Okay, so first things first is we need to go ahead and remove this light housing from the body of the car. So we're going to go ahead and use our flathead screwdriver and go ahead and pop out these little um, retaining clips here. And they just kind of pop out like so. Just like that. Do the bottom one. Okay. Okay, so now that we have those little retaining clips out, we've gotta pull this guy straight back and there's some retaining pins up in the front that kinda of click in. So you kinda of have to give it a good pull. Um, and it's kinda of hard to grip on, but I'll try. It's kinda of pull straight back. Kinda of jiggle it. That worked. This would probably be a good time to remind everyone this isn't actually my car anymore. This is my mom, so, uh, sorry, mom. The paint is, it's good. Don't look here too much, though. It's fine, though. Uh, but anyhow, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And so, looking from the top down on the back of the, uh, the housing unit, um, it's the first connection, the first light bulb up here is the brake and turn signal. So it's gonna go ahead and give it a little turn uh, counterclockwise and pull that bulb out, just like that. And we can pull it off over here to the side, and then instead of having to undo the rest of these uh, the connections, we'll just go ahead and sit the, the unit back, and it'll just kind of sit there while we play around with the rest of this. Okay, so all I've done is remove the factory rear tail light bulb and replaced it with the Zevo LED bulb, and as you can see, it's very bright and it looks very nice. Um, and it seems to be functioning perfectly fine. And if you go to the front of the car, you'll see that that light is working perfectly fine. However, the LEDs in the side mirrors, they will hyper flash just by changing out this bulb and not doing anything else. And if you look to the inside of the car, you get um, a little error message that says that your light bulb is burned out and you get the hyper flash of the turn signal indicator and also the noise that the turn signal makes is very hyper flashy sounding. Um, if that's a way you can classify that. And it's very annoying. And this is why you're gonna have to do the load resistor. Why the front and rear lights are not affected with the hyper flash issue, yet the mirror light and the interior indicators are, I'm not really sure. Okay, so next we gotta go ahead and remove some of this protective, um, I don't know what this is. It's kind of like a, a fabric-y tape adhesive thing covering the two wires that we need to access that's on um, this little wiring harness here. Um, so I just kind of use a blade. Um, I think it will work fine. So let's go ahead and do that now. See, it's kind of tearing away at this protective stuff here. I think I'm every car guy's worst nightmare, to be honest with you, because I just kind of do whatever I want. But, you know, that's how you learn, right? I got to say, this stuff is super on. I mean, it does not want to come off. Aha! It's kind of cleaning up a little bit. Cut off some of this extra. I think I'll keep this down here just to keep uh, these guys from kind of pulling off from each other um, because you do want to go ahead and mount 
um, or you want to connect in your load resistor, not right up to the back of this thing because it's already pretty tight up against the body of the car um, when this is actually mounted back in. So you kind of want those connections somewhere lower. That way this has room to bend down and not be shoved up, putting tension on your connection. Okay, so now that we have all that protective stuff that's totally unnecessary um, removed from our wires here, we're going to go ahead and install the load resistor. Um, so pretty much it doesn't matter. This can be wired uh, either way. Um, it doesn't matter. There's no positive or negative end. Um, so let's go ahead and pick a side. Uh, so let's start with, we'll just do this one. So we're going to go ahead and use our little wire taps or T-taps. Okay, so here's what a T-tap looks like. And pretty much you put in your one wire and then you'll put in your other wire the opposite way. And then uh, these metal guys will clamp down onto them and connect those two wires together. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then so once you have your wires in, you're going to go ahead. I forgot to list this in the parts um, little uh, list here. But you're going to want some pliers to go ahead and press down on this guy just to lock it into place. So now you've got your bulb or you know your uh, your connector there and you've got one half of your uh, resistor your load equalizer um, wired in now you're gonna do the same thing but with the other wire like so so go ahead and skip to that okay so we've got that one in and just kind of pull on the wires to make sure they're they feel like they're not gonna slip out and that feels pretty good and I think we're we're okay um, so yeah let's uh, give this a shot and hopefully everything's good all right people moment of truth Okay, and blinker, no hyper flash. Hey, it worked! It worked! All right, so at this stage, everything is very functional now. Um, we kind of need to button up this project. And so uh, one thing we need to deal with is before we actually remount our light housing, uh, you would need to mount your load resistor. And so some people will use double-sided tape and mount it somewhere on the inside uh, of the metal behind um, your light housing. You would attach it to metal, that way you could dissipate the heat from it because they do get quite hot. Um, or some people will use like a double-sided tape just to kind of stick it up there. I'll let you be the judge of how you'd like to do that. Uh, some people think that the double-sided tape is kind of a, a ghetto way to do it. Um, or you could just use some self-tapping screws because you saw on the load equalizer there were two little tabs to screw into um, to hold it to the metal of your car. Um, one thing I noticed, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here in a minute, is I have a void down here um, that would get, um, you know, plenty of airflow because it's open from the bottom uh, to the ground, but it's not like super exposed. You're not going to get like a little water in there. Um, and I was thinking I'm going to use this as a test because I already did the other light and I attached it to the, the very back of the metal back here behind the light housing. That's the only place where you could fit um, the load equalizer without it getting in the way of the actual light housing itself. Um, but on this side, I've decided instead of attaching it to the car, I'm just going to drop it down there because the rest of the wiring harness down there is very well insulated. So that being up against it is not going to really affect it. And you can kind of keep them spread apart anyways. And so that can, might be a really good solution for this car. And I'll update you guys if I have any issues down the road, if it melts anything or if I see any issues arising. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try that. So I'm going to show you that now. All right, so this might be kind of hard to show you guys because I am holding the light harness and the camera. Um, but as you can see, uh, so there's our wiring connections right there um, in the red. And then down here, that is a nice little void. And if you can see the, the gold metal down there, that is our load equalizer that we had just installed. And it fits right there in that gap. And I just dropped it down. As you can see, the rest of the wiring harness right here is, uh, you know, can be kept away from it. Um, because it drops pretty low down there. And then the wiring um, f that's coming to and from uh, the load equalizer into the circuit for the break and turn signal, you know, I have it pushed to each end. Uh, there's right here, and then over there I have that one tucked on the other side of the main wiring harness coming up. So those really aren't going to be touching the load equalizer down there. And so I think this might be, it might work pretty good. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and try it, and then we'll just kind of see if I have any issues down the road. I think it's a good experiment because some people do not want to have to attach the load equalizer, you know, with a screw up into the metal of their car. 
and they don't want to use double-sided tape. So uh, that's really the other solution you could use. That being said, had I not decided to put the load equalizer down there, what I would have done is actually just use some double-sided tape, I think, and mounted it right back here because anywhere along here is too tight for this and you're not gonna be able to actually push in your um, tail light housing all the way because it's too tight there already. But right here, uh, preferably I think mounting as close to this edge as possible but on this back wall, um, that's gonna give you enough room to put your load equalizer there and it won't get in the way of your lights and stuff um, or any of these um, little uh, mounting pins. So that's what I would have done had I gone that route. But I'm gonna go ahead and try this because it's easier and I don't think it's gonna cause any issues. All right, so it's quickly finishing up here. We're just gonna go ahead and put our light housing back in, uh, being careful to line up the mounting pins that you'll see here on the side. There's two of them, top and bottom. And also just making sure that we're not gonna squish our T-taps. We don't wanna ruin our uh, electrical connection there. And also making sure that um, we're not putting too much strain or pressure on the wiring coming from the load equalizer. Make sure that it hasn't gotten shifted or jammed anywhere where it can't kind of move around. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and line those up. And that looks pretty great. And this is uh, lined up nicely. Just give it a nice firm push. Boom, we're in. That looks great. And now we're gonna go ahead and use um, our little uh, connection pin things, whatever. Uh, that we're on here, we're just going to put them back. So let's go ahead and push them in the holes. Um, oh, and here's a little pro tip too, is you'll notice um, little notches that let me put in the flathead screwdriver to pull it out earlier. Make sure those are lined up uh, somewhere where it's going to be easy to take those out again. Some people don't even think about that when they're putting these back in, and they'll be twisted sideways. We're not even able to put a screwdriver or anything in there later if you need to take these back out, and that's going to be kind of a pain for you then. So just put them straight up and down because that's where it's easy to get a tool in here. Let's go ahead and push in, and there you have it. That is a DIY project complete. And so there you have it. That's how you put in LED tail lights in a 2016 Grand Cherokee or any other Grand Cherokee. And frankly, it's the same process for pretty much any other car. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys found this very helpful and very easy. Uh, like I said earlier, um, it can make your car safer. It definitely makes it look cooler and more modern and uh, newer. And uh, yeah, it's, just, it's so simple. If you really like LED tail lights, I think that you know, this is a simple way to go ahead and achieve the goal that you're looking for, which is um, a more modern look and uh, just looks real clean and real good. And uh, yeah, so anyhow, um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel One Brain Four Wheels, where I will always be here to give you guys uh, helpful videos about any little mods I'm doing on any of our cars, um, specifically my 2016 Corvette my uh, 2016, or sorry, my 2003 Suburban, or a lot of times I'll do some videos on the 2016 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee behind me. Um, but yeah, and if you want to get a sneak peek of any little mods and adventures I'm going on, uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, at GareBearVillegas. I'll have that up here somewhere typed out so you can kind of kind of find it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you guys next time. <music>